So welcome, welcome you all to this uh, beautiful Saturday here in Hawaii, June 19th. It's a special day for us in the United States, celebrating the end of slavery, as many of you already know. Um, and for me, it's interesting because I decided to wear this medal today. And the reason is this, this is a medal that I had the honor of receiving in Vienna in 2019. And it's called the Peace Run, it's the Torchbearer Award. And it was awarded to me for developing a form of work with animals that is a peaceful way of working with animals and their people that has spread around the world. And I am really honored to be in the company of, of Desmond Tutu and Mother Teresa and Gorbachev who were given this medal. And the reason that I, you know, I would think that it's like, uh, um, what do you say, tooting your own horn, it's not my horn. It's the fact that this is a way of being with animals that has spread around the world. And it's for all of you, and I know many of you here who already know the work and are working in this way, in a peaceful way with your animals, whether it's a horse or dogs or kitties or zoo animals or other animals and with ourselves honoring the body mind and spirit of animals and their people and i selected the to talk about you know change your mind and you can change your horse for those who don't know the work the fact is that we have a a, a techniques that make it possible to learn this and it's a combination of the work on the body, which is telling some T-touch, this particular base work based on communication, communication at the level of the self and the soul and the heart through this special form of one and a quarter circles. And we have this wonderful ground exercises that we call the playground for higher learning in the US, in the, in the UK, it's called, I think now the confidence course in Germany is the learn parkour, the, the, way of, the, the way of learning from elements on the ground. And then we have these leading exercises and we have special equipment that we have developed and we have this um, concept of the philosophy, two keys to success that is really, really interesting. It's if you want to change your horse's behavior or the performance or your relationship with your horse or even their sense of well being, you have to change your mind and practice holding what you want rather than what we see. And boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> that's really interesting concept of practicing that because our human tendency is to say, oh, look at, he did that again. Instead of saying, hmm, interesting. That's my go-to word, interesting. This picture that you see behind me, this is a painting by Kimri Jung. And she gifted me with this. It was the artist copy from one of the big shows that she did in I don't, don't know if this was in Scottsdale or she's had these amazing shows. And I show this to you because it's called gratitude. And that's the feeling that she got from being with me in her first workshop with me in California. And it's this concept of gratitude combined with the techniques that we have of doing this work that make it possible to make these changes the concepts of change your mind and you can change your horse, dog, animal, whatever. And the second key to success philosophy that we have is that you need to change the posture if you want to change the behavior or the relationship or the sense of well-being or the, or the performance. Now, what I selected to do today was talk with some of the people who've been in the courses. We thought, you know, the question is, can you get this across on Zoom? And we've had fabulous um, successes with this in these three-day courses. They're 
they're meant to be six hours a day, they wind up often being up to seven. And you'd think, are you kidding in front of the computer all that long? And it, to me, it's like, oh no, it's already over. <laughs> of course, we take breaks, pretty much 10 minute breaks every hour. And then 45 minutes to an hour at lunch, we usually manage to shorten a little. So I, I want to talk with just some of the feedback that we have and see, and we actually have Karen and Jennifer in Hawaii with their horse. And then I have some video, a video that I'm going to play uh, that was taken after the workshop to see, okay, how can we get this communication? So I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to begin by just playing a six minute video and it's in German. So I'm going to stop it and talk you through it because it's one horse that is videoed. I, I was asked to go um, and work with this horse and a couple of other horses in the stable of um, Klaus Balkenhol. And Klaus Balkenhol was a gold medal dressage winner. He was also the coach of our American dressage team for a number of years. And I've been working with him and his horses for 25 years. Um, so this was a horse that was in training and um, with his daughter, um, Belly Falkenhol. And the, it just had the issue that in the outside arena, when there was a wet spot from the rain, just a dark spot, the horse would spook and wouldn't go over it. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to show you, this is a collection of small things that we did. And you'll get a sense of um, kind of an overview of how you can actually, um, I worked with this horse for two days. And when I say two days, like an hour each day, and this is a collection from that. So now I am going to uh, bring this on. Oops, no, I don't want the sound. That's just, I don't want the sound. So I'll share this, bring this up here. Ashwarka beaten from Annabelle Baltonhole, but he stared on the of the sound. <laughs> so um, what I want to show on this particular horse, we have a chain over the nose because of his tendency sometimes to pull away. I want you to know that in our courses, we rarely ever use that. We use a Zephyr lead, but I'll talk about that later. Now, this is what he would do. There's just a dark spot in the sand that was there. And so what I'm going to do, um, and it was typical. Now, if you push the horse, he would he would back up. And if you push him harder, of course, what, what's he going to do? Half rear and spin. And this is a really nice horse. He was just afraid and he couldn't see. So what we do is take him back into the stable and um, put him in the cross ties. And I'm going to check his body to see where are there areas of tension. Now, all of this stuff you can do, I just want you to, for those of you not acquainted, this is my latest book with my niece, Mandy Pretty. This is uh, Training and Retraining, The Tellington Way. And there are the steps to go back and start a horse from scratch without bucking, without the horse ever being traumatized. I mean, that's the peaceful way. And, and it's very successful. And it's really great in terms of keeping you safe. Now, in here are also numbers of horses that um, had issues. And in three days of one hour a day in the work with me and one hour in the stable with the owner and one of our uh, assistant teachers with the key touch on the body, the horse is completely turned around. And it shows you how you can do that too. Now, so what I've done here is I've attached the cross ties to the upper ring on the halter. Why? Because the horse couldn't lower his head if you attach to the side ring. I don't like to work horses like this, but this is the way they have to be worked in this stable, so you adapt to it. Now, what I'm going to do, you can see where that's hooked up. I'm going to ask him, can he bring his head down? And look, he's using his lips and saying, no, I can't. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust. And I'm just wanting to just be up there, touch him, 
Notice where my hand is on the halter. And I'm just doing this little, just wanting to put my hand up on this neck to find out, is he sensitive there? No? Mm -hmm. And just putting the hand and letting him feel, wait a minute, just, can you just be still? Now, this is what we call taming the tiger. And in this way, I'm going to stop again. You notice I have the chain through the ring and to the top thing. Now, normally, you could use just our Zephyr lead. And the reason you put it up to the top, it has a tendency to bring the head down. And I use the chain, as I say, in all of our classes that where you can get online, we don't show this anymore. And the reason is that Horses have been so abused over the years with the chain. And that's even if you, you know, if you don't do it or if you don't have the, the, the skill to do the nuances, it's just asking to bring the head down, which the weight of the chain really helps, then we use the Zephyr lead. Now, I've attached the rope to the side ring. It goes through a ring, a, a bar actually in the stall, and around and underneath here. And then... I hold it and you, you want to be a good two feet away here. Now I'm just letting this horse feel my hand. First of all, look at the look on his face. Look where his ears are. He's just thinking, oh, maybe this is okay. Now, why did I do this? I want the horse when he lowers his head and says, okay, maybe I dare to listen to you that I can release that hold so that I can really skipping his head to take it down. Now I'm doing little zigzags and just stopping and letting him feel. Now I'm starting to do, oops, I want to go back just a touch. I want you to see this, just the position of the hand. Look where my thumb is spread out from the hand. And I want you just to do this on your own arm. Thumb is a connector and curve your fingers and just move the skin in a circle and a quarter. Now I'm, I see I have to release the rope to lower the head and I'm asking him to bring the head down and just stand. Now, this is really not easy to do at all on a horse who's been run backwards. It you're gonna to have to do this from the side in the beginning because they don't trust you. This is a sign of trust. And just putting the hand there on the, on the pole between the ears and getting him to listen. And I'm really paying attention to my breathing, which is a part of the nine elements that we logical way of teaching. I'm asking him, look at my left hand. Now, this movement, ah, and Karen, we're going to see how you do with this today. This is, it, it looks so simple. And in all the years I've been teaching this, I'm telling you, getting a person to put their hand on the halter and work between two hands, I haven't yet found a way to get that across. It's really interesting. And then we're really specific, but this concept of trust, bring the horse here to this level and actually be able to stroke. Now, this is going to be important, uh, Angela, for the horse that we're going to talk about, your horse with uh, liver issues. And look, from the base of the ear, I circle the ear. So I circle the ear and then a slide out to the edge. And that circle on the ear is a hand right as close to the base as I can. That affects the triple heat and meridian, the digestive system, the respiratory system, and the reproductive system. So I'm just slowing this down so that you can really see that. Nice. Good. And sometimes I'll there this sliding of the forelock. Now if you just think of that, I'm just showing you moments of this, but I really did this for a while. Just this very in, 
intention, intention is really feel this. This is what I'm doing. Now we go to the nostrils. And he's starting to blink and be able to keep the head there. And I just give him time. Taking the crest, look at his ears. He's starting, ah, he says, hmm, maybe I can trust you. Little rocking and, ah. Now the fact that he looked around, do you see he has a different look in his face? Here. Now Klaus is going out and he's going to spray this again. And I want you to see, this is what she did. And that's what he does. And look, head goes up and down. I want to, oops, I didn't stomp it. I want you to you know, look at the way he steps away. And if she pushes him, of course, he'll half rear and try to spin back. And the problem is she doesn't dare to let the reins long enough that he can look at it because the head going up and down, he's trying to see. And when he's on contact, which he normally is being ridden in the dressage arena, then he can't judge that. So you'll see what we did. So I'm asking him, can, can you look at that? And he can't, you'll see this in a minute, but I'm just asking him, let's give him a chance. So then I, this is, I brought him in to the arena, took the saddle off, of course, and this is using the wand and I'm asking him to come forward. This is one of our leading positions. And I just want one step, like a half step, not even a whole step. Good, and stop. And notice how he gave his head there and came forward. And I've got two sheets of plastic here. I'm just asking him to come forward with them a good uh, four and a half feet apart. Look at the way he's uh, stopped there. I want you to see, look at the balance. Now he's trying to see, and this, this really takes practice and skill to be able to give him his head and now keep the con keep keep your connection but not physical connection with him look the way he's bracing himself it's so interesting and he's trying he's trying to see differently and i'm giving him the chance to look at that and think, I want him to think about it. Now, this is after the work that we're going to show you right now. I had just taken him into the courtyard because obviously you can't just start there. Well, it's not obvious, but you can. This is a body wrap and my amazing sister Robin Hood and Mandy have written a whole book together on wraps that we use on horses to give them boundaries. We're gonna be talking about these boundaries. Now, this is Susanna Salzman, one of our instructors in Germany. She's on the opposite side in what we call um, the homing pigeon. And look, look at the look on his face and look at him step back and say, oh my gosh. Now you'll see, I don't just push him. I want him to think about it. We just wet, just put water down there. I ask him forward. Look at him trying to judge it. Now, I should have, I, that was a mistake that I asked him there. I should have just let him wait, stand there. Because his next move is to say, ah, I can't do this and go to the side. Now, as soon as he starts going to the side, this is, this is where the typical attitude is, oh, look at, he's just being dominant. No, he's not. He's being afraid. He can't see. And so in this case, when he acts like that, I take the other side off because it's not safe to have a person in that case. If that horse wants to jump around, I don't want a person on the other side. And this is the dingo. I'm asking him to come forward, wait. Good, step by step. This is his position between two hands that we call the dingo. Good boy. Notice the chain is up the side. I don't put it over the nose. I just, because I got the weight of the chain there. And again, I'm gonna say this every time because this is a sport horse 
this is a really strong horse and I want the weight of the chain. No, he's lipping me. This is called biting. <laughs> Sorry. If you wanted to bite me, he'd bite me. He's communicating with me. He's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did, this, is a, this is too much. Wait a minute. And so I just hold the wand there and say, nah, easy, easy. Just think, stop and think. Now, this is only a couple of minutes later. Now, I can put food down here. I normally would put hay down, but they don't like hay all over the courtyard. So I can put a little bit of grain right on the water. Um, yeah. And now I take him back in the arena and he goes forward. Now, this is in, as I say, two sessions, a total of maybe two hours. And I'm going to stop the screen share. This is a combination of all that we do. And Lindsay, could I just have you watch the chat? I'm just admitting a lot of people in. For some reason, we've, we're having to admit them. And that is really, um, we have to keep our eyes on it. So <laughs> I wanted to just kind of give you a little overview for those of you who don't know, this is a combination. Now, I think that I'm going to um, start, um, I'm going to, we're just going to have a short time with each of the people. And Lori, um, I see you here, Lori Gaines. I'd like to um, bring Lori on. And Lori brought her horse, um, Dreamcatcher, who was 21 year old Mustang. And it just fascinated me because Lori has been working with horses all her life. Her father um, trained horses and bought, bought and sold horses. And Dreamcatcher, I just love that Lori, you said it's the first horse that made you cry of frustration. <laughs> and could you just tell us just a little bit about what you were feeling that she was doing, what you felt with her? and tell us what, why you were frustrated, just briefly. Um, I had pretty much not completely given up on her. I still thought there was hope, but she was actually for sale um, up until I, uh, I, I had an ad for her. I didn't tell you, but that picture I had for my background that I sent you, that was one of her sale pictures. Um, it was like, yeah, I can't work with her. Maybe someone else can, I need to, you know, uh, yeah, uh, I tried everything. I, you know, tried being gentle with her and uh, then trying being harder with her. But let's see what she was I, doing. What was, what was the behavior that was frustrating you? Well, um, she, I couldn't even lead her. Um, like if I was trying to lead her, she would uh, just shove, shove into me. Um, literally run me off the trail or the road uh, to try and get ahead of me or just be dragging me or I I would often end up just dropping the lead rope and letting her run off because otherwise it was a tug of war game there just no no control and she um, was 21 and how right at that time right and how mm -hmm. long how long had you had her so we I've had her since she was a yearling and um in my defense she was my daughter's horse and i but i i knew my daughter was never gonna do anything with her but um yeah even when i started working with her as a two-year-old um you know i got her and you know i go through the process of doing lunging and doing long lines and everything but i got her i'd get her in the round pen and I couldn't get her to go forward. She just wanted to follow me around. Um, I was always, the few times I did ride her, I had just felt like I had no control. Like she would just bolt and I was gonna die. Just, yeah, I remember um, you saying that, of course. Yeah. So my, the thing that's so interesting about it is that, and, and one of the things you said, when you lunged her, she'd just come in and you couldn't push her out. And so one of the, you know, what, what is um, the, what we call the dance steps, which are the leading exercises, the specific way we have of leading horses and bringing them forward and stopping them and standing them, but with an attitude of showing them what we want, instead of sort of 
hoping that they would get it and um, and then not being very specific. And so um, when you when you started working with that, Dori, what I remember you saying it was the 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 difference was she was then listening to you and right that started a, a shift in her attitude. Yeah, it, and it came down to the when when you said change your mind, change your horse. You know, I went out there, looked at my horse, and said apologize to her and said dreamy we're going to try a new way we're we're going to start all over again and um now it yeah it's been amazing um i went from having a horse that i can't do anything with her i can't ride i couldn't even get the bridle on her i was ashamed i didn't even tell you that part um i that's why i usually just put the halter on her and put have bit hangers that i clip her hackamore on <laughs> so i couldn't even put a a bridle over her ears. Um, so do you want me to fast forward to today's ride or do you want yeah, to know more the, about the process? The thing, the thing that was so beautiful and what I, I want you to, I want to um, really, first of all, in, encourage you by saying, listen, I mean, here we were with uh, uh, Olympic riders, very successful training stable and they're wonderful people with their horses I've, I've known them for i think i think it was 30 years when i did the ago when i did the first video of a tea touch for olympic horses dressage and um so you're not alone i mean these issues that you that you were having just because of lack of clarity and and the way you know lunging is coolly macro it's not easy if what makes it easy not easy what makes it doable the way we do it is we start off only like four feet away and we get the horse to walk in a straight line and we stop and if they don't understand we slide up and show them where we want instead of reacting and punishing for what we don't want and it's an attitude you all you know this thing you're, you're going to hear it from karen who's worked with horses all her life also this attitude, if a horse doesn't do something, you know, just get after them. And if you're strong enough, man, usually they will line up. But not always. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and Dreamy was not, you know, she had that. I I just called her stubborn. I know she knew she wasn't stupid, even though I, I did. I, I called her a lot of things that weren't nice. But so, yeah. Um, during the class, I was just amazed because I was going out every day and just working for a few minutes. I set up a labyrinth and within five or 10 minutes, she was already, well, just doing the tea touches, starting out doing the tea touches and getting her to calm down and, okay, we're going to take this easy. And suddenly, you know, within no time, I, I can't remember what I said, how many minutes, almost no time, she was walking quietly through the labyrinth. Um, listening to me just i you know i called it a miracle it, it, it was amazing um just taking the small steps getting her to listen and changing my form of communication um and so okay so today i decided to take her out and ride her again and i I've, I've only been riding her maybe once every couple of weeks so it's not like i'm working with her every day because i'm busy i i work with her i'll do some tea touches in the morning or maybe a little bit of leading, but so today I took her and brought her out and saddled her up and took her up the road. And let's see, we went about three miles and did a nice climb, went someplace. Um, she hadn't quite gone as far as we went today um, into the trees, which I thought that's one thing that spooks her. She's not afraid of flags waving or cars or bicycles, but she's when she gets in the trees, she starts thinking that she's there's predators, but she didn't. Um, she was calm the whole time. We did some trotting, some walking. And make a long story short, when we turned around to come home, she didn't even want to come home. She wanted to keep going. And this is like, she's become the trail horse that I imagined she could be, you know, 20 years ago. So we just had a wonderful ride. And she was happy and relaxed. and. 
Oh. I was happy. And <laughs> so I'm, I'm just beside myself. We're, we're thanking you. We're, 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 we're just like, yeah. This is well, and, and the thing is that we left out in the beginning is that she would, Lori would go out for a ride and the mayor would come to a certain place and she'd just turn and go home. And there was not a choice. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh and, yeah, just spin around. Right. And then she'd, she'd start bucking or spinning, you know, which she knew that scared me. And, you know, in the past I'd be like, okay, I'll just jump off and lead you or let you run home, you know, or, or you know, whatever, or not even get that far. So today that that didn't happen, you know. There were a few little zigzags where I was like, "Okay, let's keep going," but yeah, she just was like, "No, I want to go over here now. I don't want to go back home." And it was like, she was exploring. So it's so beautiful. Yeah. And I remember after I called you after one of the after the the class, and um, you had come to a place before where where she didn't want to go, and you thought about you know giving up or getting after. I, and and you just changed your mind and she went yeah. on and that was like uh -huh. talk about change your mind and holding that you know it the words are infinite possibility if this is a quantum science word because all of this the beautiful thing about this work you don't have to understand the theory behind it but for those of you who really love to understand things what's behind this is the merging of science and spirituality and when I say spirituality, seeing the, these these beings as perfection, and what can we do to come in relationship and have this really special, you know, communication? And I, I love it because recently um, one of our really wonderful horse women wrote, and she's she's editing a a piece uh, about massage, and so tea touch was included as a form of massage, and she said, no, no I, I know it's not. What should I say? And I, you know, the thing is, it is a form of communication. And um, one of our wonderful practitioners said, you know, it's not massage, it's a message. Just change that E, that, that um, A in massage to an E, and it's a message. And it, it is a message. And we get it with our minds and our hearts. It's a heart to heart cell to cell and soul to soul connection so Lori, thank you you make my heart sing thank every you. Time. <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm going to hold the questions because we, i've got i really want to get i want you to hear some of these really wonderful um experiences that we had just from three days together for six hours and then going out and working um it's so um let's see i think oh please uh lindsay we've got a bunch of people waiting at the door trying to come in um darn it i wish i could call wes and ask him to take that thing is off. there a way i can bring them in i don't can't you don't you see where it says admit your co-host and you just oh i oh admit. i didn't know i was a co-host yeah you just hit uh, admit well no i can help with that if you want well I yeah just hit admit. You see, here you go. I need to be a co-host to help that. What you are? I'm not. I don't think How either one of us are. So I made you both co-host, and something happened. Sorry, you all. Is for some reason that. I'm not today. Wow. Right. No, I I did actually hit co-host when you first came on, and something has happened. Um, Shannon. I think here. it got uh, omitted or skipped or something. Wait, now something just happened and flipped me off. Sorry, you all. This is really interesting. So, Lindsay. I I can admit now. Yeah, you were you are co-host. Okay. And um just I'm trying to find Shannon now. Where are you? Little just take a little time to count your blessings. Yeah. And the blessings are that we have these horses in our lives. Boy, it's really flipping me. Make co-host. Okay. There you go, Shan. Sorry. Wow. We're, now you are co-host. Thank you. So um, I think what I will do is, um, uh, Karen, you're there with your horses in Hawaii, you and Jennifer. 
And I'd love to bring, let me find you. There you are. And um, I would, ju I'd just love to have you just, Karen, give a little um, oh, I can't. overview about a change in attitude that you had, changing your mind and changing your horse. If you remember, I'm not sure. Um, so let's see, we just talked about it yesterday. We're so cute. Um, I can't think of it, Linda. Well, okay, uh, so it's, it's um, it, what you and I would have done in the past if a horse. You know, oh, yes. So okay. Or, so you know. always, I was always taught that if for, to make a boundary or to get your horse to do something, if they didn't do it, then you would yank on the halter or give them a smack or tell them to knock it off. Right. And, um, and I had a pretty easy mare. And so I never got very big or dramatic, but I certainly saw people get big and dramatic. And, um, and then she would just pretty much straighten up. But now that I've been more consciously trying to um, work with my horses, and I know that I don't want to yank on the halter or smack them or do any of those things. And um, so then I found myself really boundaryless, like, um, you know, that, that they were doing things that weren't safe or comfortable or, um, and um, so it was really helpful in the clinic with you to really remember that we still have clear boundaries and yes, we're really going to do this right now, but to do it in such a kind and clear way. And the clarity, I, you said that earlier today, the clarity makes a huge difference. Yep. And, and it's so interesting because um, the, for those of you who came in late, sorry that you were, we, we didn't get you in. Um, the idea here is we, we have to set boundaries, but we do it from a place of kindness and forgiveness is a really big thing, um, with this work and forgiving ourselves. Uh, Lori, that's one of the things I'll forgive yourself. Dream catcher definitely forgives you. And, um, and forgive our horses. Now, one of the things my brilliant sister, Robin Hood, and if you have not had a chance to listen to her Zooms or work with her, treat yourselves because she is really incredibly insightful and brilliant and knowledgeable. But awesome. one of the things that Robin says is um, uh, understanding behavior does not excuse it, on the other hand. And rather than punishing for what a horse does or doesn't do, wait a minute, stop. And say, just get, get grounded and then show what we want. And that's what this work is about, is step by step, really clearly showing what we want without running them back, without punishing them, without, you know, without attitude on our part. So Karen... This is so much fun because they were we had we had Karen and Jennifer with the horses and we could work with them during the class. So can how did you do with the ear tea touch? Um, so we've had lots of varying. Uh, we've been working with it, and really, it's amazing how just just making it a uh, opening for it because Bayessa was super sensitive with her ears. So we had just trained ourselves to not bother her ears. We had, we had just trained ourselves to stay away from her ears. She's fine if you halter her or bridle her, but if you do anything else or more focus on her ears, she would act like, you know, something horrible had happened. And so we had trained ourselves not to do her ears. And so um, then working with you and since the clinic, we've, um, we've practiced some and both Jennifer and I have a hard time going quickly and so we're like loitering on their ear, you know, and you were working with us during the clinic, but um, it's been fabulous. And this morning, Linda, I did ear waggles with Agustero oh. and Beth and they both liked it. <laughs> and I had been sure, well, now they're letting us touch their ear, but they're not going to do that waggle thing. And then after you and I talked last night, I came and I'm like, well, what the heck? What do you want to waggle? And then we did the, <laughs> the waggly stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about, you'll see, it's, it's something, it's very strange. I do not know why I do it. I, I, I usually have a, a reason. And, and just as like with the ear, like, what? Why do I do this? And so I, it's um, one of the things when you come into the class, you are gifted with uh, three weeks yeah. of yeah, e me. entrance yeah. into my We Horse um, uh, collection of 31 videos. 
on WeHorse. That you can, you know, you don't have to be in my course at all. Here, you can sign up for it, and it's really um, useful with all the tea touches and all that stuff. But one of the things I do is show waggling the ear, and so somebody did it in one of the classes that that I I do on an ongoing basis. And she started wiggling the ears and then waggle, 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 and kept waggling, waggling. And Kirsten and I are checking these videos. What, what, stop, why are you doing that? And the horse is stretching her nose farther and farther and just loved it. I do not know why, but it was really effective. So let's see, let's see this ear tea touch. Now, while Karen's lining up to do this, what I want you to know, first of all, First of all, number one, and I should always say at the very beginning, is that T-Touch is never a replacement for primary care or help. So when your horse has a colic or when, when, when you need your vet, you call your vet. This does not ever replace a vet. But the fact is that while you're waiting for your vet, in the case of colic, you can help to relieve the pain. And you always want to let your vet know what you're doing because it really can you know, reduce the effects of it and reduce the pain. So the in the in the case of um, shock or injury, work the ears. Now, for trust, for relationship, it's one of the greatest things you can do. So let's see, Karen. Okay, here we are. Beautiful. Still go slow. <laughs> now you're just a little close. You're in her space. Back, just leave a little more room so she can lower her head and not be that close. You have to speak because I, unfortunately, okay. I don't know how to pin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If people can pin Karen O, that's you'll be able to see. Uh, so Karen is doing some of the work now you can see hold on, hold on just a second now yeah so that was beautiful and what do you think she was just trying to do a fly, Get a fly. Right, her. right so yeah when, when she does that let go let her do that oh, okay right <laughs> it's allowed to get flies <laughs> she can get flies okay uh there she is well, no, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Now let's just think what happened. Because I mean, Karen, thank you for doing this because my gosh, we're all here watching you, right? <laughs> so when, wait a minute, it was a little fast, right? Just easy, put your hand up there and because you're under pressure with all of us, just put your hand on the pole, easy, and then ease your hand out there. And Beautiful. Now, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, what happened? She lifted her head, right? And you were yeah. reaching for the ear. When she raises her head, you say, no, excuse me, easy. Just bring your head down yes. a little. And yes. when she brings her head to that area, that level, then you do the ear. This okay. is why coaching is really helpful because you think, ah, we're supposed to do it like right now. And I apologize to you all that I didn't write down how to pin somebody because it's so helpful. It's, every time I talk, it takes it away from Karen. Yeah. Linda, there still seems to be um, more reaction to the left side. Yes. And um, is okay. that, do I going when she brings her head up or do I stop halfway up her ear or like what's the... Easy, wait, wait, easy. No, wait. Wait. No, that's really nice. Wait, easy girl. Just give her a little break. Do that another fly. Do you have I, um, do you have fly spray? Yeah, we we put some fly spray on her beforehand, and we took it out of the uh, out of the. Now, uh, just remember, just remember, she's under pressure because you're under pressure. Yeah. So just know, we don't have to do this fast. Just breathe. And when she lifts the head again and say, ah, easy. Now, wait a minute. Because what we want here is connection, contact, trust, and not just to bring her back to this place. 
good at this place of calmness and hold and slide out. And I think what you should do with that left ear, because clearly, you know, she, it bothers her. Take the back of your hand and what we call the llama and, and just take the ear back with the back of your hand back against her neck. Can you show her again, uh, Linda? Can you show Karen what to do? I have the, I, I couldn't see what you did. Oh, sorry. I took the back of my hand and just take her ear back against her neck. So um, let me just do that. Okay. So the back of my hand. Yeah. Okay. That's it. You see, she didn't object to that as much. Yeah. No, doing it. I can't believe that nobody, none of us know that I don't know how to pin you. Um, let me see if I can do this. No, I already pinned her. Yeah, but she's flipping back and forth. I know it's 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 actually spot. spot. <laughs> Not Good girl. See, as soon as I talk, then it goes off her. There she goes. Look at her. Oh, there we go. Easy. It was too much. She, she too was much. okay with the back of the hand. Don't just assume because you she let you do that one time. She has to think about it. Just stick with that on the back of the hand. Just stick. Anyone watching can pin can pin Karen? Really? Someone just put a pin instruction up in the chat. So if you look at the chat, there's an instruction. I didn't see who it was from, but indicates how to pin Karen's screen for each individual person. Okay. I have pinned her. Oh, hi, Megan. Hi. <laughs> I, I just went up into my box that has my picture in it. And for every the, time you dots are. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Stop, you guys. Because every time you speak, you're still losing Karen. Oh. So it's not working. So it's okay. Let's, let's thank you for the hope, but it's not working. Okay. So Karen's back, just doing, you can see how relaxed the bay is. Yeah, and just see, just stand and do nothing. And just put your hands quietly on your face with the lying leopard and the back of your fingers, see what you prefer, which she prefers. Because this is really a lot of pressure that you're under, you're doing great, Karen. Speak again, because every time you speak. Okay, you do want it. So yeah. here they now, are. Now yeah. slow down. Let's do that again. Just put your hand on, do a circle and a quarter and a pause. Okay, can so there? can you see that now, Linda? There yeah. we go. It's beautiful. Yeah. For a moment. And then I can... Yeah, and do you guys, is it, is this, do you want me to get up closer to her face yeah, or perfect. this? This is good. Okay, great. And that's really nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm I'm just talking so you guys can see me. So sorry. <laughs> no, keep talking. Karen. Okay. You do, you, as long as you talk and I don't. <laughs> it's a, okay. There we go. Now that was really good, Karen, because she wanted to itch her nose there. So let her do it. And that's enough, isn't it? So that's enough. That's enough. So watch when when you when you're doing like a one second yeah. circle, do a two second circle when you were up there before the ear. Slow down a little bit, everything. I know you're such a good girl, but we don't we are only having one featured horse right now. Nice. There we go, yeah. That's it, just putting your hand there. And put your hand up on the side of her neck, just behind the ears. Just put your hand there like I did in the video, if you could see it. There we go. Is that correct, Linda? Yeah, but hold the, yeah, hold the halter while you do it. There we go. That's part of this containment, that creating trusting boundaries. 
Okay. And put your hand like right behind the ear. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. Yes, Okay, we got some music now. Singing. <laughs> I was holding my breath. Yes, we're breathing again. <laughs> <laughs> Now she, that's really nice. And see if you can just put the back of your hand at the base of the ear. We're just going to do this a moment because I want to give you some ideas and you and Jennifer can work with that then. But when you look at the video after, you'll, you'll see that you were just a little fast. Okay. Okay. The, the, ba the base of her ear by the front. Yeah. And then slide back, slide, push. The Is ear. that what? Is that what you're looking for, Linda? Just like that? Yeah. Do you wanna do it again? Okay. Yeah. And you actually push it against the neck. There we go, like that? Yes. Okay, great. No, it's enough, isn't it? Yeah, she's, yeah. It's enough and I'm glad we kept going until she was peaceful again. Yes. yes. And again, if you go back and look at that movement you made, look at my hand here a minute. You went, yep, yep, slow down. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yep. <laughs> it's like one second circle. Really move around. But there we go. That's nice. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Now she's peaceful, isn't she? Yep, it's very peaceful. Now you just got to change and look in the eye. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Thank so you. Think about this a little. I'll go on and work. And then I want you after just to, we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, good. We just got some nice licking and chewing. How oh, good. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. Thank I love it. Shannon just wrote in the chat, always amazed, never surprised. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> How many times do we do it? So you you notice here, I just want to remind you, you had to you had to back up a little bit. You were too close. She doesn't have any space. And you come a little tiny bit to the side. And the last thing is you were holding the halter on the left and reaching with your right hand to the ear. Be balanced yourself. If you're going to work on the ear on the left, put your hand on the right side of the halter. Great. And Shannon, if you can make a note and remind me Thanks. after next time to remind Wes not to have people be admitted if they can come on without us admitting them. I have forgotten that. Thank you so much. So, Miss Megan, I've had so much fun with you. And um, if you could just um, tell us just um, about this wonderful horse, Tarak. Yes, Tarak. Yes. How long you've had him? Okay, I've had Tarak. Tarak, better way to say it. Um, four, about four years. Um, because of my own physical issues right now, I have not ridden him yet. And I know it'll be wonderful. He was four when I got him. He's eight now. And he had a, you know, a little, some issues coming from Mexico. And, and so we're um, bringing him to where he's happy again. And, um, but I think he's, he's, I think he's a happy horse. So I- you've, been, had the, you've had the good fortune to have Ava. Huh, and right? I've had Ava, yes. yes and here, she's here with us. She's one of our practitioners for horses. and has been helping Megan all along. It and totally helped. And we did do work. I don't know what Ava you sent, what picture you sent, but Ava's worked with him in the in the labyrinths, We've done groundwork with him. Um, someone was riding him for a while, but we decided that that wasn't working. And his saddle is gonna get fit, refit on Monday. The Schleser people are coming. And after the summer's over, I will be the one to get on him and um, start to ride him. He, uh, 
he's he's a big horse he's 17 hands you know i can screen share but i don't know what i how i would do that what i would share it's, it's okay um oh, it's okay. Okay. I, i'm going i'm going to hold up the video i tried that with wes before and i can do it you can do it okay. so I've been, with linda we worked on something very important in in the june class and that was we did applied kinesiology where we talked to him because I had him, he's a little, they all get a, they have all the three that are in the barn, a nibble net at night, which is a, you know, a flat backed, it's like a hay, it's not a hay net, because it has a back on it. And the front has like two inch holes for them to get hay out of, to supposedly slow them down. And I don't, I think he's got a very big muzzle. Linda said something about that when she saw his little video that, he has a, a large, he's a warlander. He has a large muzzle. Lips, it's not his muzzle, it's his lips. His lips, yes. And I, there were two, he, so he was flinging that thing against the wall. And we we did, we asked him in the, the, the kinesiology session that we had in this class, um, whether that was frustrating him and raising his cortisol, not being able to get to the hay. And, and he said, yes. So that night, I dumped the hay out. I had already set it up. I dumped it out onto the, the floor, which I have swept back. So it's just on the mat. Um, so it's they eat, you know, as clean as possible. So it's on the mat um, and I put it down there and I let everybody come in from the pasture and then fed, you know, fed, everyone was fed. And I went around giving them their little fruit and cookie for dessert. And I gave him his. And he gave me this kiss, which he never does. He's a real boy. He doesn't really kiss you unless he really means it. And he just gave me this little, with his muscle, that those big lips, just, just, just slightly up on my face. And I was like, oh, when he, I mean, it's like, oh, the heavens open. And it's something else because he doesn't do it normally. And I mean, he's very, wonderful but he doesn't really want he doesn't want to be kissed he's like get away from me so i don't i don't bother him but he gave me this kiss and he looked into my eyes and i think he said to me you no know, i think he said thank you for listening to me and that was really incredible and so i've been trying to listen better ever since so now we're we're working with the wand on the cross ties I have cross ties that are very long and loose. I'm careful. They don't trip up in them, but they can put their head way down and turn around and look at you. They can turn around and almost scratch their midsection. But so I've been doing little videos and sending them to Linda with the wand <laughs> to just work with him with the wand because he's, I haven't even gotten to ear work yet. I, I can't wait to try what I saw Karen doing. But it's going to be a while because he's very, very fussy around the head. And so I've been working with the wand and she gives me something different to try every time. And he's starting, he turns around and looks at me. And so I'm, I'm trying to like stop, listen, talk to him a little, put the back of my hand to his big muzzle and say, hi, I love you. I mean, you know, and tell him he's the perfect horse. And slowly, I go, I, I really have to slow down. I know that. So what was I, happening is that, slow, first yeah. of all, I, I, this is, you told the story really well. The one thing you forgot was that one of the first things that you were hoping to change was his, uh, he was banging on. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that part. Yes. Sorry. I forgot that. He was uh, banging the door with his foot and he's not shod. So it was just the, the hoof. They has very strong hoofs, but Linda really felt that it was not good for him to do that. And you know, the, the your immediate reaction is, oh, stop that. Oh, fine, do something different. Shut up or ignore him or all the ways that I learned growing up, like Karen and probably Lori. I learned all those, those ways, you know, to uh, get the horse to behave. And um, anyway, so Linda, analyzed him and said, well, why would he be banging the door? And um, I 
assumed, and I said that I think he wants to come out and be want me to, you know, show him some attention. And and she's right. She was right. And he does want to get out, but he, you know, when he's not when he's not so eager, when I'm not there, he doesn't bang the door. So, <laughs> uh, so it's um of course he can't. He, he he could almost figure out how to open it himself. He's that so one. Megan, Megan. Okay, the, going the back. Thing, yeah. The thing that's of interest to me when a horse bangs the door is it, it could be that they're just spoiled. In other words, they're. I mean, that's what we think, right? I have to tell you, over the years, um, some horses do it more than others, and your your attitude and everybody's attitude. Well, I'll feed them last right? If you're, if it's a feeding thing, or I'll take him out last, he's got to learn, right? And so my question was, what's causing it? Because it could be that he is, that he feels like he, you thought he wanted to get out to pasture to graze. And so my question is, well, maybe, maybe it's not just the fact that he wants to be first, but maybe he gets hungrier than other horses. And that was my question. This is what we could do with kinesiology. Is, does the horse, you know, what is it? We can't ask him what the reason is. We can say, is the reason that he's really hungry? Or we asked several questions. And that's how we yeah. came to the hay net thing. That then I found out that he just has, because some horses get are fine with that, pulling the, the hay out. Although I say that, and so far, every horse I've worked with, with, Ha- that had them was frustrated by them. And that's why he's really flinging it, which is interesting. And so this is why we use the kinesiology. And, and this thing of using, asking specific questions that give you information about how your horse is thinking, um, it seemed to me when we did that, Megan, that you started seeing him a little differently. Is that true? Yes, very true. I started to see layers. I started to see this more depth, depth of, it was more like I felt it. Right, just, but what you are, feel, like, it's not seeing, it's feeling it. And, it, and this I, is the I thing, felt well, mm-hmm. these, these horses, when we start to recognize that they really do understand us and they are there for a reason with us, Something happens yeah. at a at another level that's that's beyond actually beyond words. And I know some of you here, uh, some of you I know have experienced that with horses. And this is a way to communicate without learning animal communication. It's something anybody can do anytime. And so what we did, and I'm I'm going to just show you, and then is you can you can try it. You can all stand up. And just, um, we're going to ask a question, like Megan, maybe you can direct me. Um, well, do you remember approximately the first question that we asked of him or any of the questions? And- yeah, um, does, does the nibble net frustrate you? Right, now before we got that answer, we had to ask, and you can all stand up and just try this because some of you may want to try this. Um, so I have to ask, first of all, what is a yes or no answer? So I'm going to ask us all, if you want to stand and do this with me, I'm going to ask a question that we know is a no answer. And we want to know, do you go back or forward? Because the possible answers are back or forward or left or right. <laughs> you don't get that often, but sometimes. So I'm going to ask a question that is a, we know is a no answer. So are we all here together on this Zoom session because we want to study elephants? And well, I rock backwards because yeah. not today. Back. <laughs> not today, right? And then what's a no, what's a yes answer? Are we here because we're interested, most of us are interested in a deeper way of understanding our horses. Oh, 
my body goes left and right. <laughs> that means, oh. yeah, some are, some aren't. Hmm. Not oh. the reason everybody's here. Oh. They just be curious about this, you know. Uh -huh. um, so let's ask another question. Um, are we are we here um, hooked on to a Zoom session with Linda in Hawaii? And my body comes forward. So I have to be really careful about, you know, how I ask the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it can't be something we might want to do because that would come with it. <laughs> so anyway, we did this. And then you asked, we asked, was it frustrating him? And it was a really clear yes. Yes. Really clear yes. And that's why it was a really was, clear yes. Yeah. And, and then it raised the cortisol, which, uh, you know, we're trying to lose weight. C having cortisol raised is no good because that is no good for the insulin levels and stuff. Cortisol is the stress hormone. And, and so that's what we want to avoid. Yeah. And um, so that was, anyway, it gave you a lot to do. And this. And with, and with the kicking now, as a result of changing my mind about the kicking, I bring him out right away. When I get there, if I can't go in there immediately, because I do have five horses and sometimes I have to take care of some other ones, um, like get the beamer cuff on d'artagnan's leg because he's recovering from something and you know etc i give him a nice little chunk i'd not bermuda i give him a nice little handful of um orchard grass hay which is nice they like that i don't give them that as their main food but it's just a treat it's like a, a treat so i give him that and and then he's fine um he eats that and then i go bring him out First, always and first. Megan, let me talk about that because there would be some of you who would just naturally say, listen, he's a horse. You know what? He's got to learn to be patient. <laughs> yes, and what we found out that he was frustrated with the food and wanted to get out. And so you can decide, you know, what kind of attitude do you want to have? Um, it, and I, I'm not quite sure how to say this to get this across for sure, but in this case, what I suggested and what, what the, the, the kinesiology showed, the answer showed is that yes, he was hungry, right? And so you've satisfied him, you let him know that you see him and you'll get out as soon as possible because many people would say, make him go last. And that's a, that's a dominant thing and not, um, not based on what I would say, attempting to find a relationship that um, is, I, I don't, you know, I don't know the words for it, but I, I think you get what I mean. I don't worry that he's going to become like a, a spoiled monster because I bring him out yep. first. Right. Yep. Exactly. And, I, and, and there, I mean, I do give too many treats, but but and that, Megan, that can set it off because that will get them banging. Right. And that, and that, there's a fine that. line. There's a fine line here, you all. And the yes. thing that came, that from Megan changing her mind and doing this, he's not banging now, right? When he's waiting. Right. No, it's 106 out there today. So if I'm spoiling them just a little bit in the summer, I'm not going to feel bad about it because yeah. they're out there all day and they're always hot they come in they're they're warm in the morning because now it's like 90 and they're hot when i go i mean it should i'm, I'm sorry I'm, okay i'm upset about the weather but anyway he is he's really his sweetness is becoming more apparent and we just we have to keep practicing the the with the wand okay and I really like to get some ear work but i i understand you better will. how to do that we'll get there so first of all, what I what I just want to show you, I'm going to show you a couple of just a few seconds here. And what I'm asking Megan to do is when the horse turns around and tries to talk to her, stop. Offer the back of your hand. And it's so that he can sniff it. It's like a 
here I hear you. Of course, don't put the front of your hand, I mean, the, you know, your palm, because then they think it's food. And I'm just going to do this uh, because I don't know how to get my WhatsApp onto the screen. I'm going to show you. We, we tried this and it worked. Here you are. Now, see how much he can turn his head around when she's just, she's stroking with the wand and she's holding it the wrong way. You need to hold it, your hand by the button end. And see, he's trying to say, what are you doing? Now, that's where you want to stop. Just stop and don't keep just stroking. No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah. you, you, every time you step away, listen, I hear you. Then don't, don't go on, just stop. Reach up and touch his face. He's asking, touch his face with the back. And I would suggest if you possibly can, Megan, use rope instead of those chains because that noise is irritating. Not good for the nervous system. Okay. Just change it, change it up. Okay. And okay. I'd like to be working with you so that um, you can work him in the stall with no halter on and nothing on him at first, or not at first, but after. And so he stands and you can work him everywhere and he can turn and touch you. You're, it's really wonderful working with you and with him. And I'm looking forward, maybe later today, you're going to make another one, just holding, doing one stroke from under the chin, down the neck, down to the front feet and stop. Breathe. Ah. Breathe. They take another one and just like I just want to make a different connection with him. The reason for the wands, and we call that dressage with a wand because if we call it a whip, not a lot of us have seen what happens to horses with, and it's not meant, of course, it's meant as an aid. Um, and we're using it to outline the body, give him a sense of boundaries, just like we were talking about with Karen with boundaries. So just smile, slow down, count a blessing. <laughs> and I'll make, I'll make one a video in the morning, send it to you. Too hot later. No, I mean in the morning. I don't, yeah, whenever, in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, four o'clock, okay. And Wonderful. this, would you, would you stand up a moment? Would you be willing to ask? Mm -hmm if they would rather be inside during the heat of the day it's hotter in the barn i don't think so and there's but no grass you don't have fans yes but um it still doesn't it just blows hot air around it. i mean do by 11 o'clock that barn it is so hot do you have a sunshade outside oh they have trees oh okay oh, they okay. go in the shade Oh, oh, okay. I didn't realize. I, I didn't see any shade. It's a five-acre pasture with trees, trees down one end and up. Y'all know they can go in the shade. Don't have yeah. to ask. It's a, it's be, I'll, I'll have to send you a picture of that. Okay? Megan, thank Where, you. I look yeah. forward to that. Thank okay. you. All right. Later. Okay. So um, what I would like to do, um, just because we've run over with the time, I'm, I'm going to, um, Angela, I want to find you. I'm going to address the issue that you have with this horse and just give you a sense of what you can do. And it, it really is starting with the ear tea touch. And this is a horse, let me find, wait, I, I got so into what I was doing there. I've Oh, yeah, I have to go up here, find my gallery again. And then I'm going to take see if there are any specific questions about what I did or a directed questions. This is lovely to see you. There you are, Angela. Hi. <laughs> so um, if I may just do a very brief, um, if you can unmute yourself. And I'm going to put you on gallery view. So, um, I mean, not on gallery, sorry, on speaker view. Um, so this is a horse belongs to a friend, is that right? Yes. And and you've been assisting with it. So it's a horse with a, how old is this horse? 
Um, she's 13. 13. Yes. So, um, so, and, and there's a, a liver issue going on, right? Yes. So one of the things, of course, I, ha I have to say again, this is never a replacement for veterinary care. But over the years, we have had great success with adding T-Touch to what your vet is doing. And we have quite a number of vets in different countries who are also T-Touch practitioners. Um, and certainly many others who are who recommend this work. So one of the things that you can do to help to boost the whole system, and we've found it to affect the liver, is the ear, ear T-touch or, or any of the issues that you have, any of the issues. Why? Because that stroke that Karen did so nicely from the base of the ear out to the tip that affects the entire body, the entire, every part of the ear is a different, has a different connection to the body. And around the base of the ear is a triple heat meridian that affects the digestion and the respiration. You know, as I said before, the reproductive system, not interesting in this case, but the whole immune system. And it just, as many of you I'm sure know, there are medical doctors for humans who only put staples in the ear and don't work in any other part of the body and can affect the entire system. With the ear T-touch, we can, and this has to be, I mean, a lot. It's not just a few minutes here and there. It's like, and you do three or four slow strokes, you know, from the base of the ear out to the tip and then pause three or four and then do a, the other ear three or four. And you might even find, you know, try it and see what I'm, I'm getting like three, maybe four, not more. Pause. And by pause, I mean, just like take a breath, go back and do the other ear and you just keep doing that. And we've had some really remarkable and, and I would say, um, do it maybe time yourself and maybe spend three or four minutes at a time if you can do it twice a day and Angela because you're at home you can also do it from a distance as you know fantastic yes and really very specific and I would suggest that you do your own ear while you're thinking about working on your ears and I recommend this for for all of the tea touches, you can do this on yourself. Now, this is not like some kind of woo-woo stuff because it's absolutely now through quantum science, we know that what we think we can affect over, over any amount of things. And just by doing this, your thumb behind, forefinger on the ear lobe, Go in this little bowl of the ear right there. Slide up. Go up higher because each part of the ear has um, connects to another part of the body. And right down here, right in the base here, this is where we get the connection to the end of the whole vagus system, the whole the whole gut, intestinal area, heart, all of this is part of the vagus system. So you're really affecting the system. And then in the human, just so you know it, the trigeminal, where I'm putting my thumb, there's a little divot right in the middle. You'll feel it. it's a little like a, where the ear attaches, right in the middle. It's a, like a little indentation. That's where the trigeminal comes in, is what I'm told. And that affects everything on our face including sight, smell, taste, all of this. Now, just by, it's a great, it's really good for you to be working on this horse <laughs> by, by doing this on yourself, right? This will yeah. be double, double whammy that you're going to be getting. And it can't hurt. No, it can't hurt. And I was wondering if they'd had a second opinion from another vet. Is this a holistic vet that they're working with? That would be my question. Oh, it was just a, um, the, the normal vet that came out and did the sort of the teeth check and 
this was off the blood test test that they gave the results of that i would i would um, see if it's possible to get a holistic vet to um, look at this horse from what you described great i will Sometimes do that there are other ways of going about things um so i'm going to um I'm, I, are there any questions, Shannon or Lindsay, that we have about what you saw? And you can ask them. They may not be now. You write it down at the bottom. There's a little face that says reaction. Click on it, and you can raise your hand if you have a question that's from something I've said, did, something about the work you'd like to ask a question about. And by the way, I want you to understand, I love skeptical questions. Um, you know, or if you think, oh my, maybe I should know that. There's no such thing as a dumb question. I will do my best to answer you. And if you don't have any questions, if you have any comments also, we've been listening to a lot. Linda, it's Karen. Karen, yes. Hi. Uh, so the one thing I just heard you say was about the immune system. And so Sarah, our little Icelandic, who is now standing, that was her blowing in your ear. Um, uh, she has, we, her immune system was better than it was when we first got her, but she still is itchy and has runny eyes if I don't keep a fly mask on her, which is hard to see out of. And, um, and she just itches herself to make sores. And, you know, I, ha I can heal them and I have all kinds of great creams and things for her, but what work should I be doing? Whoa, it's a, that's a tough one because some Icelandics have this. And um, there is a blanket that you can get. Do you have any, I wonder if we have any anyone here from Germany because it's such a common thing with Icelandics that they have, uh, it's a, a blanket that's really light, you know, that like let's, you can have in the heat because there's a lot of heat in Germany, more, more so than actually we in Hawaii here have, I think. And um, so it, it breathes, but it keeps these little tiny flies off. And one of it, because that's what causes, they say causes this, you know? Okay. So let's think, let me think who I would, uh, and it's interesting that you said that Derek, my um, sweetheart, who's particularly like things, he went to the store and bought this giant piece of made her. He makes her dresses that she wears like a, a blanket. He like basically made her a horse blanket, even though he didn't know that horse blankets existed. And um, and you're right. We just need to go back to that. It's summertime. So I just need to get her dress back on. Yeah, no, <laughs> we call okay. it. I'll, I'll tell, uh, and 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 the way they make them, they go underneath also to cover the belly. Oh, okay, okay. And one of the things that they've discovered about this is if you get it, if you can get a zebra stripe a pattern. Oh. These things don't want to land on them. I see somebody, maybe someone here has some information. I see a hand up here. But think about that. The other thing that has been found to help and it can't hurt is um, is kelp. To feed it kelp as a supplement. Okay. You know they they have that. Uh, I forget. You just actually, see. Yeah, actually, I think I have some. I I just um, for some reason haven't been using it, but I will go back to the kelp and get a cover yeah. for her. But and the the, the German one. Do you think I can find it online if I dig around? Uh, let me just think. Oh, we'll get one of our Icelandic okay. horse people. Sh Sh Shannon, help me re remind me. I'll I'll uh, get in touch with Ulu. She they have like three hundred Icelandic horses, and uh, she had one of the best tax shops in the in Germany for Icelandics and other nice. people. So she'll Thanks. she'll know what the latest is on it. And um, let's see, somebody who has their their hand up. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, oh, that was Karen. You can take your hand down. Sorry. Oh, I, I saw your hand. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to take it down. I will. I just go back to the reactions on the bottom and click it, and you'll get it. Any questions about 
what you saw, any comments about what you're taking away with you. Those of you who are interested, you, uh, you can join the class. I'm doing them every six weeks and you can come in as an auditor or come with a horse. And I'm taking like eight horses, six to eight horses. And, um, and we work with everybody in the auditors, get a chance to see it and then to listen, of course, and then practice. And, and of course, with our horses, um, we, we, get, we get to work every day. Uh, Linda, if, yeah? Uh, Sunny and Carrie have a question. Okay. Before I answer that, I'll just finish this. If you're interested to look at the horse class, you can go to ttouch.com and go under, um, ah, where I, oh, and then you go to workshops up on the top and then uh, attend a workshop and then you'll see that it's in August. And Lindsay, you said it's the 26, 27. I'll post it, I'll post the info. Okay. It's 27, 28, and 29. Great. So August. I'm, yes. And then um, on the, I can't remember, uh, July, the 27th, I think of July, anybody who's been in any yeah. of these okay. weekend courses comes together for six hours and we discuss every, all the horses. Great. Um, any, 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 no more questions or comments? Hi, Linda. It's Sunny. Well, it's Carrie and Sunny. Oh, right. yes, yeah. Um, my mom was remembering, do you still recommend adding apple cider vinegar into the feed that would deter some flies and such? Oh my God. Of course. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's good for the horses anyway. You just put a little, uh, let's see, it depends how do you, it, it, we used to water in buckets, of course. So I don't know how you're watering. Um, if you can even offer them during the day, some apple cider vinegar in water does definitely make a difference. We, we um, did a study at the Pacific Coast Equestrian Research Farm of horses, and we, we actually counted the number of times horses switched their tails, those who were having apple cider vinegar and those who weren't. And it was significantly different. It has to be natural apple, apple cider vinegar, you know, um, but I really recommend it. And recently I saw a big study that was done on it, recommending it. And I had to laugh because that was part of our program in the 60s. It's interesting. Thank uh, you, Linda. My mom, Sunny, is grinning from that memory. And absolutely. I think even with uh, some of the climate change things, we're kind of needing to pull out all the stops and be really consistently creative with how to provide comfortable environments. So, right. so thank you. Absolutely. Lori, did you have a, a comment about that? Yeah, um, Dreamcatcher, I, she gets fly bites. And um, when I take my bucket of uh, apple cider vinegar water out to sponge her off, get rid of the itchies, she always drinks the water. And so, yeah, I was actually going to mention that and was wondering. So that's probably why I need to be giving that to her because she's Absolutely. a genius and, and knows that it's helping her. But yeah, she has always drank my apple cider vinegar water. And I'm like, I'm trying to sponge you off with this, but. Yeah. So, we forgot to okay. tell you all that, that Dreamcatcher is a Mustang. <laughs> oh yes, yes. She knows she knows what to eat and how to take care of herself. And yes. <laughs> so great. Okay, good to know. That's why she's doing it. Yes. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, seriously. <laughs> so, um, I would just like to hear from a, a couple of other people who have a chance to share because we have Julie Sadler here from the UK. You've been doing Tea Touch with horses for many, many years. Would you just be willing to just talk to us a moment? I get to see you. I'm so excited. I'm going to be with you all in the UK in next April, uh, actually end of, yeah, beginning of April. What would you say to people about this work? What's it done for you, Julie, over the years? Can you, are you are still with us? She might not be because getting a little late. Well, maybe you've, maybe you've left. Um, 
So, Valentina, what what brought you after all these years? What keeps you coming? What what attracted you in the first place? You. <laughs> yeah, but what about it? I mean, what? Tell me. Well, you know, I I didn't actually meet you and have a real honest to God class, which I think was a companion animal class till 2019. So I was just working from your from your books and videos. And I have to say to Angela, um, in 1992, Angela, when the queen had her, your queen, had her Annis Haribalis, I felt so badly for her that I wanted to send her a Christmas present. And I thought, what do you give the queen for Christmas? So I sent her the... I sent her one of Linda's, at that time, videotapes, horse videotapes. And I got a thank you note, just saying. That was so much fun. Just saying. So, <laughs> yeah, um, on Buckingham Palace stationery. But um, I think partly the change in you that is reflected in the work that has come over the years with your spiritual expansion and the nature of who you are as a being, your uh, constant inquisitiveness, your open-mindedness about incorporating things um, curiosity in a way that you and I have both experienced with age of caring so much about what other people think, <laughs> which for you and me has been a willingness to be perceived as wackadoodle has, has been part of what kept me coming back. <laughs> that's funny yeah the, the thing that's interesting you know from the uh, what I, I learned something you all yesterday I'm I'm 84 in a, um, about a week approximately two and, weeks um, one week one week <laughs> all right thank you for the note and oh man like I can sit here I can be totally engaged and when I get up let me just try it now <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a little stiff when I get up and I'm thinking, what is this? Like, what, what is this? And yesterday, Shannon and I were talking and Shannon said, and she's 10 years younger than I, um, said, well, for the first minute and a half, I'm stiff. And I thought, I'm expecting to be like I was a year ago because before COVID, I was, you know, completely like not stiff, didn't have any of this stuff going on. And I feel way more like 40 years old. And here I am treating this, thinking this 84 year old body is going to be able to jump up and be ready to go. I can walk out of it in a couple of minutes and then I'm okay. And so it made a huge difference to thinking, thanks to COVID, I don't know, like if you have horses, you didn't slow down. But for those of us who've been stuck, in, not stuck, blessed enough to have a and be safe over this time and be in connection. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm usually like going all the time, running, moving. And um, so I just want to I'm become very patient with myself and recognizing how great this is, Valentina. <laughs> Could I just say one more thing about why, why I'm involved with all of this work is, um, I I'm retired now, but I still work without a license. I was a human and animal chiropractor for 31 years. <clears throat> what was taught to me as animal chiropractic was all about force, and I couldn't do it. Uh, when I came upon your work and incorporated it into my toolbox and started using it so much, um, I'm pretty pragmatic. I may be eclectic, but I'm pragmatic. If something doesn't work, I won't keep it in the toolbox. And your stuff works. <laughs> yeah. Like magic. So, 
the and worst. One of the, one of the people say to me so often, how can you be so patient, Linda? Really simple. When one thing doesn't work, instead of getting louder or harder or faster, we sit back and we think, hmm, how can I be clearer? And we have this big toolbox. It may be that doing the tea touch right now is not the best thing. Maybe I need to lead that horse to the labyrinth. You know, maybe we just need to um, put on um, a wrap, a body wrap. Maybe we need to put on a head wrap. And it's so interesting. So whether we're talking about horses or dogs or kitties or humans, um, we have a lot of different tools. That's mm -hmm. the thing that's so interesting. And uh, I see Pam Beats is here. I mean, we've been, we've talked at least once a week and Pam's in Colorado and Pam, I can't remember what was the first training you ever came to. Oh, I guess it wasn't in Colorado at, uh, at the ranch, at Joe Arabian Ranch. But the thing that's so interesting is how we, you know, we have different, we have a lot of different choices. That's, that's what makes it so interesting. And I just want to read something to you all because the, my question is, why does this work work? Like, why is it? You haven't seen it today, but we can reduce pain, our own pain, or disappear it with these one and a quarter circles. And, and, the, and fear, we can overcome fear. People who've had agoraphobia and can't go out of the house just by doing the heart hug. And the tea touches on themselves anywhere can overcome that. And we've got, we've got uh, two people who are, one person who's an instructor and traveled all over and another one who has been able to attend her, her, her daughter's classes now, school classes and couldn't go to plays or anything because she couldn't come out of the house. And she came to it first for her horses and now she does it for herself. So if any of you are interested, you'll see on that ttouch.com, you can see that we also have an ongoing human class it's once a week, live with Linda, and it's for self-help. And you practice this on yourselves. And I was just going to, did Marnie, I didn't see that Marnie made it today. Did she, Lindsay? No. Yeah. There you are, Marnie. So Marnie has been, I, we're, we're going to just hear a little bit from Marnie and then I'm going to end. But Marnie has, I met Marnie um, at the Olympics in Los Angeles in 84. Her horse was in the Olympics and I got to work with him after and we've been working ever since together. And Marnie has taught so many people at, at, the, at shelters and at the Austin various humane societies in, in, in Austin and still every week leads a class for dogs there in Austin and, um, and has been organizing and teaching forever. And just in the last little while, she had a breakthrough. And Marnie, I would just, I would so love it the way you described this breakthrough that you had. Starting from the beginning, I'll try to make it short, but horse people can't really have injuries and have layups like their horses do. You know, we don't get stall rest. Uh, <laughs> just keep, you have to keep working or else you're, particularly if you're a female in the horse business on your own, you know, you just, nobody else is going to be there anyway. And that's just, you have to be as tough or tougher in order to compete. So, um, and it's fine. That's the way I was raised, <laughs> whatever. So um, I, you know, I have injuries over the years. I have no problem if, you know, if a gate slams open and, and some cattle run out and you know, or something like that. It doesn't bother me. I, you know, whatever happens, you get knocked around in the horse stuff. I've done ranch stuff too. And uh, anyway, so if something happens, you put a, you know, like your horse, you put a wrap on it, you do whatever and keep going. And I sprained my ankle about three or four years ago and um, put a boot on it and, and uh, I tried the wrap and that didn't work. So I put a boot on it and being horse people, it felt like it was rubbing and it actually really was, but you know, 
of course it would rub a little, you know, whatever. Anyway, I ended up, it's a long story. I ended up in the hospital, I had surgery and I am practically having to learn to walk again. And which is not in any plan that I've ever had. And I didn't cope with it very well. And I didn't know how to, I'm a horse person. I just, you, you don't ask for help. You, I've never had a massage in my life, horses are to be ridden. And, you know, when I heard about, you know, tea touches or horses to be ridden. And finally, when I saw somebody do it, I went, oh my God. Um, so, and I, I mean, was, that was many years ago. Yeah, a ago. <laughs> anyway, um, but, but it's that sort of thing. And um, so I, I've been struggling for a while and with COVID things are harder. You can't go to, I'm not a big fan of doctors after what happened in the hospital, but we won't go into that. But, but you know, you can't go to people so much and get help. And I was just learning to, to, uh, to get help. I knew I had to do, finally, I realized I'm really gonna have to do something here, but we have COVID. Anyway, so um, it's been a struggle and whatever. And somehow the first horse clinic that I attended was the one in April, was it? Yes, or, yep. Yeah, I've, I've done the two. Three day online. You mean. Yeah, yeah, I, that, yeah. I, hardly the first first one ever. <laughs> um, and so I thought, hmm, you know, this is going to be kind of odd, uh, <laughs> and all that. So somehow it occurred to me. I have no idea. While I'm sitting there, why don't I do every single thing Linda does and shows on myself, on my leg? That I was my, showing on the horses. Yeah, right? everything that she showed. Yeah, because we weren't doing people. Uh, and 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 it got a little bizarre with the wand work and I, I, I grabbed the wrong length. I had the horse wand, which was a little harder. But I did everything, uh, and and every single touch she did and everything. And I, when it started, I couldn't touch my leg. Uh, you know, from the beginning, I couldn't touch it, and I and it still is, was very separated from me. But over the last two clinics, I've done the same thing, and. I, <laughs> If she, I mean, if, if she had the sure foot out, I got on that. It, you know, there wasn't anything that she did that I didn't do. And I just now was doing the same thing with the stuff she's showing because there were some things I hadn't done on my leg. We look at this all the time at clinics. We sit there and we talk about it and we show it and Linda does it, and we look and then, you know, whatever. But this, this, there was something about this that I don't even know why it occurred to me, but it's changed my life. My leg is now deciding maybe it's going to be just a leg with, with a limp as opposed to something that doesn't belong. Uh, and it, it's still, I'm still having problems, uh, but it, it now feels like we can do this. You know, I, I, I no longer feel like I'm, there are times when I'm not good at this getting well and and trying to fix things i'm not good at this at all and so I, but i just i realized that um my leg has become part of me again and it's changed the way it looks it still shows after two almost two years you can still see a six six by six square place on the leg that is different color and and that color is changing but it it's part of my leg now my run my hand down there I'm just running my hand down over, over a place in my leg. It's no longer, oh my God, you know, I'm no longer, it's what we talk about with dogs and horses. We give them the confidence to know that they're going to be okay. Well, gee, apparently that works for people too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, maybe it's going to take some time, but it was kind of, it's been a little bizarre, but it's been fascinating. And I, you know, I'm not, haven't been interested in, in this work, I don't work on other people, you know, and that kind of thing. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people that do, but, and I don't have work done on myself, but I, <laughs> I certainly never thought of touching my own leg. I mean, I tried, it wouldn't let me, I couldn't even doctor it. I couldn't do anything. Anyway, that, that's, that's not a short version, but. <laughs> Marnie Reed, I, it's a really important version. And the, the thing is that we, we talked about it in the whatever, class we were just in a couple of days ago and maybe it was Tuesday uh, live with Linda and this idea of othering ourselves when we have something it, that hurts or you know something has happened to or we've had 
it happens with surgery after surgery that was really hard surgery or usually when it, when it's a life-threatening or crippling surgery you can't touch your body it's totally normal i mean i've seen it year after year and if you say what we'll do in the class is say if your cells can t talk to you how far away from your body would they want your own hand and it often starts out like with old scars it can be 20 years old and it can be as 8 10 12 inches and you have to just start using the different touches the back of the fingers because we have like 20 different animal names that we've designated different parts so you know are you using the back of the fingernails or using the side of the hand they've all they're named after animals that i've worked with and you start with that and it can take like two weeks before a person can even touch a 20 year old scar. Cause I'm thinking now from in one of our Tuesday lives with Linda, it was from a 20, from a hysteric, uh, from a, uh, uh, what do you call it? When the baby is taken from you, that's how she felt, you know, cesarean section and didn't want it. And, um, and she had to go through this whole process. It took a couple of weeks before she could even touch it. And then it started to change and then it didn't hurt anymore. And this is the thing, it's so beautiful. And I really recommend, we're, we're doing now an ongoing class. It's called it, you know, Discover Inspiring Self-Care. And that's what we do in all different parts of the body. And it's very exciting. I saw that there was apparently an answer in the chat. Um, I think, uh, Angela, you're in the class, right? And Megan is also in that. Do you want to just say what it's done for you? Because Angela, you came first, you came from it because of a dog class and then the horse class and now in the human class. Yes, I'm absolutely loving it because I can try all these different things and they're really working. So um, for instance, when we had the, the first one on the, the Saturday um, and we talked about um, you know, if someone has a twitch going on, um, then how to do the touches and it will immediately relax. Now that night, my husband's leg started twitching and he said, look at my leg. Oh, I, I felt this almost like, oh my goodness, let me have a go at this. So I just very <laughs> calmly, I didn't want to say that. I was very, just let me try something, something I learned, you know, on the class. And literally I was just doing, um, it's a Python lift and I was doing that and within two minutes, I took my hands off and we looked at his leg and it had completely stopped twitching. And I've just got so many little stories like this where I'm like, I'm just going to try it and it works. So that's what I love about it, because you hear these amazing sort of life changing stories and then you learn little things which you can actually try. And when I get that, I just get this warm, fuzzy feeling. I've helped my mom, I've helped my dad, I've helped myself, and I just love it. So yeah, I recommend it to everyone. And it's, it's, it's truly, it's truly amazing. If you're interested, you can go to T-Touch for you online. Is it slash in, um, inspiring self-care, right? Can, um, can you can you write that in, Janet? I'm sorry. Who can, do you know what exactly? Um, Angela, can you find it? I think it's a sign. You can go to look at the information. Teach for you online. dot com slash inspiring self care. It's once a month on a Saturday for three hours with Eleanor Silverstein and I, and every Tuesday for at least two hours. It's usually we're trying to keep it now to two hours, but as long as people need and we just help you know, coach and learn different things. So it's been a pleasure and thank you all for being with us. I, what I'm, let's just end with the hard talk. I mean, I usually start with this, but I, you just put one hand over the other cupped lightly is one way. If you have like, bigger breasts and it's not so comfortable, fold one hand like this. That's the baby orang touch and put the other over it and imagine the face of the clock. 
It's important to take that off the wall, put it here. Six o'clock toward the ground, nine toward the right shoulder, 12 toward the chin, three toward the left shoulder. And very gently, as lightly as you takes to move around whichever direction you want. Try one direction and then try the other. You go one and a quarter times. And it's like from six o'clock around, we'll go counterclockwise. For those of you who already know you don't like it, go the other way. I'll go, I'm, going to, I'm going to go from six up to three, uh, 12, nine, six, three. Deep breath in through your nose and out through pursed lips and the smile. Now try the other direction. See which you prefer. In through the nose to activate the nitric oxide. Out through pursed lips. And every time after each one and a quarter, you stop. Do a little pause at the three or the nine and then release. Now what this does for you is the smile activates the feel-good hormones, the serotonin, the light movement of the skin, very light, activates the most oxytocin, the trust hormone. And one and a quarter takes us from the activation of the part of the brain that controls, you know, our fight, flight, freeze, stay, cool around. You know, the part, the, the part of the brain that we generally live in. <laughs> and we can actually activate the forebrain. We can come to a place of heart coherence, it can bring us to the state of the parasympathetic rest and recovery state, just from that, like one and a quarter. Before you go to work with your horses, you can do that from home. And all of this, you can practice at home when you don't have time to get there. Shannon, thank you so much. And I want to, Shannon, would you write the title of your book? Because if you want to know more about where this, like what's the background of this, Shannon Weil went to my year-long school in 1967 at the Pacific Coast School of Horsemanship. And we've been working together ever since. And she wrote a book called Strike a Long Trot. And it's a, a great read about her experience and about all the stuff that we did over the years at the School of Horsemanship. We had people from nine countries and 36 states who came to be with us for nine months. Strike a Long Trot. It's a great read. Blessings. Count your blessings. That's the other thing. Ah. Join me and Roland. Each night before we go to sleep, we just share three blessings in our life. And if you're living with a favorite animal as your significant other, share it with him. Aloha. <sighs> Let's all wait. I, love <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to leave you. I, I just enjoy you all so much. It's such a pleasure to be able to share this work and hear from you all. Oh. Aloha. <laughs> Beautiful. Onward to a beautiful day for you all and evening for those of you way over in the other part of the world. <laughs> I'll stop the recording. <laughs>